Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 14th of October 2019 and we have an unexpected interview with controversially Greg. Unusual in that we're going to discuss the just completed state opening of the British Parliament. I shall be asking Greg what he thought of the Queen's speech and what indications did it contain as to Brexit and the direction which the British government is heading. So let's listen to that interview. Good afternoon, Greg. Good afternoon. Well, rain again. As always, the Queen's speech is now finished. Now, it was quite brief, and for those listening who do not know what the state opening of Parliament actually means, can you please clarify this for us, and also tell us what you gleaned from what Her Majesty had to say? State opening of Parliament is part of the formal structure of our governance. It is one of the occasions when the three arms of our government come together, the monarch, the peers, and the elected House of Commons. It may seem odd to be having a Queen's speech and a state opening of Parliament at this stage in a Parliament. However, it is customary to have state openings on a regu regular basis after what can be described as state closures in that the queen the or should i say the monarch uh, opens the parliament outlining what her government's aims and intentions are during the coming coming parliament we haven't had a queen's speech and state opening of parliament for the longest period in some 200 years so one was long overdue because the state opening of parliament and the queen's speech incorporates an outline of what the government is going to do and the further one gets from that queen's speech the woolier the outline becomes and having not had one for a while it was becoming decidedly woolly the outline today from Her Majesty the Queen was that, firstly, uh, she attended in the House of Lords. The Chancellor of the House of Lords then summoned the elected to come as guests of the peers, but on the instruction of the monarch. And they processed from the House of Commons chamber to the House of Lords chamber, where they had standing room at the back of the chamber. The Queen commenced her speech. And today, it was interesting to watch what was felt to be a priority by the government. Uh, the government put forward 26 bills, Acts of Parliament to be enacted. This included seven bills on crime and related to crime. However, I was very pleased to see that right at the top of the list came uh, that it was um, her government's intention uh, to withdraw from the European Union and that was added to by in importance as far as I'm concerned that immigrants in this country from the European Union who are settled here will have total right to remain they've chosen to live here they may continue to live here 
there has been a great deal of fear mongering from the um, scoundrels who are trying to oppose uh, the democratic vote of the people for leaving, claiming that they would all have to go home. So that this would make for discord and annoyance amongst the people. Secondly, and in my opinion wisely, the government second, second stanza of bills was sustainable finance. This means they will not take the socialist route of uh, massive borrowing that uh, has so often landed the country in dire trouble and has just led to several years of austerity to put right the 13 unfortunate uh, years of borrowing by Labour under Blair and Brown. Next on the list was the NHS, which there is an undertaking to better finance, strengthen and put in place an independent board to investigate complaints and uh, failures in treatment. Uh, this, I presume, would be like the um, complaints against the police, where it is not handled in-house by the police, but by an external body. As part of the health service, there was also an undertaking to improve the situation of citizens in terms it implied of mental health and it stated of the elderly as with our increasing elderly population, uh, the difficulties of care do need a fairly thorough overhaul. Next on the line was crime. And as I've already said, there were seven bills in this area. First, one of which was longer sentencing for serious crime and that serious crimes would serve a longer period of their sentence there would be enforcement of British justice on foreigners who had come to this country to, to commit crime. There would also be greater attention to victims of crime and uh, some investigation of better ways of compensation. In order to achieve this, security of prisons is to be increased and the police will receive greater rights of arrest and holding people so that it gave the impression you would not be able to wheedle out of it on uh, clever tricks of clever lawyers. Domestic abuse would also be given a greater attention, as would divorce relative to the considerations of the children of the family. The next bill was education and digital protection, um, which linked somewhat with uh, children. There would also be greater protection of pension savings. Uh, I presume this is in the light of uh, the number of um, well-heeled corporate owners who have tapped into the pension funds only to go technically ban bankrupt or relocate those funds beyond the reaches of the British courts. 
another bill will be in, involved in uh, ensuring uh, safety in flight uh, because we will be moving into a new era of um, airspace control uh, in which it is hoped that we can cooperate extensively with continental Europe and Scandinavia so that uh, there is absolutely no increase in risk for the people in the skies or on flights in and out of Britain. Also, it is aimed that there will be more local decision making by local people. Uh, I think there the devil will be in the detail. So let's see what happens. Um, better funding and greater government interest in space and science and environmental issues will become more enshrined in law uh, i i personally am fearful of this one because i think that as many of you will know uh, i'm of the opinion that uh, many of the aspects of uh, conservation and uh, climate and the like have become very muddled and um, not founded on very good uh, science. Uh, let us take a terribly simple example. Uh, we have protected the badger in this country uh, such that it is incredibly difficult to cull and maintain them at a reasonable rate well in protecting the badger we have condemned the hedgehog to extinction and within the next eight to ten years the hedgehog will become extinct having been pred predated by the badger badgers also predate ground nesting birds and much beyond um, which leads to a loss of songbirds, uh, a loss of many of the birds we have seen naturally in our habitat. Uh, conservation is also endlessly conserving raptors that live on songbirds. Um, in that result, we have far too many raptors uh, and our bird population is diminishing at a hell of a rate but we're not allowed to interfere with this as a matter of conservation, uh, which of course turns conservation into being a complete nonsense. Uh, the same goes somewhat for climate, which is incredibly conflated with pollution, and the two really shouldn't be spoken of as in any way similar. There will be a new body set up to oversee this issue. And I can well imagine which virtue sign signaling twits will be on it. Uh, it's an area to keep a close eye on. One, one area that is pleasing to see, individually mentioned, is there will be a total ban on the importation of anything related to trophy hunting so you may well um, get your jollies by shooting a lion in a cage as they do in uh, particularly south africa where they charge a great deal of money uh, uh, to people who pretend they're hunters uh, who go in with high-powered equipment into a cage maybe a few hundred yards square where there are a known number of lions uh, and they are allowed to shoot one and this costs them a fortune and they can pretend they shot a wild lion um, they might as well walk up to it and stick a needle in it um, because that would be just about as challenging 
Also, the government will be supporting devolved government within these United Kingdoms, um, probably in the hope that these United Kingdoms become somewhat more united than they are now and um, it silences the clamoring of the extremists who wish to destroy their region for their own personal gain, um, like the SNP and Plaid, supported by a collection of um, completely barking mad um, other minor parties in Wales who uh, seem to understand very little about making the country work successfully for the people. Uh, there will also be a strengthening of the Armed Forces Covenant, uh, which also encompasses uh, the needs of vets. And uh, there would appear to be a likelihood of more money being spent in Armed Forces. Plus, there is a firm undertaking to maintain contribution of a minimum of 2% of our GDP uh, for uh, armed forces for uh, defense uh, to comply with the aims of NATO, and which uh, it is made clear by so doing uh, is being endorsed by our government. We will champion free trade. Uh, which, let's face it, has got to be good for all of us. And we will give direct attention to climate change. Uh, perhaps they could start out with having some um, sound science rather than the waffle that's come out of the United Nations. Uh, that sums up the 26 bills seven of which were on crime and justice. The only thing that I haven't mentioned is under the terms of the uh, withdrawal from the European Union, the issue of the CAP, Common Agricultural Policy of the European Union, and the CFP, Common Fisheries uh, of the European Union, uh, are to be negotiated and the aim is for our own far farming and agriculture to be a matter for uh, these United Kingdoms and uh, protection of our uh, fishing waters uh, to be for us and prevent Spanish and I see uh, recently, um, I think it was a Lithuanian um, super trawler um, close, close into shore, uh, stripping out as much of our fish as it could under the EU treaty because they know that we will be protecting our own fisheries shortly. Uh, let us hope that that can be put in place while we still have some fish left. And Europe will then revert, I presume, to going down to the Bight of Africa and stealing the food out of the, the fishermen there's mouths uh, for profit, um, which is leading to great difficulties and potential famine in the Bight of Africa, where their staple diet of fish has been purloined by the European Union uh, fishing vessels from Spain and France mainly. So that was the Queen's speech. Now that the members of the House of Commons have withdrawn to the House of Commons and are taking a lunch break, after which they will be discussing the noble speech in debate and the Labour Party is, can be expected to put up everything they possibly can um, to default on their promise um, 
to the British electorate that uh, they would carry out withdrawal from the European Union. Uh, the Liberals will be jumping up and down uh, to try and make sure that family and friends still receive massive grants for their businesses from the European Union. Uh, as with Joe Swanson, the leader, whose husband uh, has received several million pounds in uh, largely unsupervised grants uh, for his business. Uh, in return, it would appear uh, that she is fighting tooth and nail for and on behalf of the European Union against the wishes of the peoples of Britain. And that was the Queen's speech. Um, in summary, I hope I've managed to cover all the points, Richard. Um, over to you. Well, Greg, that was very comprehensive. Thank you. Um, just for clarity, so that uh, members who are not familiar with the process, many conspiracy theorists will say the Queen's speech is written by the Queen and dictated to by our politicians who are elected by the people. Now, that is not the case. Would you just very, very briefly, because we're coming to the end of our time, just say who actually writes that speech and what impact or input Her Majesty can have into it? Her Majesty has the right not to deliver the speech if she does not feel that she can endorse it. Um, it's a right that would be, dare I say, very dangerous to the Constitution uh, should she exercise it. However, had, if she does not agree with it, particularly at her advanced years, she could follow the example of Queen Victoria and not attend the state opening of Parliament uh, Queen Victoria, for the, um, several years at the end of her life, didn't attend, uh, claiming health and the like. Um, however, um, she sent uh, either her Chancellor, or she can appoint um, a peer uh, to read the speech, or... Um, some other notable emissary. It could, in this case, perhaps have been Prince Charles, um, and possibly uh, the degree or the level down, shall we say, the pecking order who was delivering the speech would give some indication of Her Majesty's opprobrium at what the contents of the speech was, because the speech is drawn up uh, based on information provided by the Prime Minister. No, doubtless with some inf input from the Privy Council, but primarily from the Prime Minister, because he is the person who is going to be putting this series of bills through Parliament. It would appear in this case that uh, Her Majesty uh, wishes to see um, the people's vote of 2016 honoured as her government of the day promised, uh, wishes to see it honoured as the currently elected government promised having put in both the Tory and the Labour manifesto an undertaking to honour the outcome and uh, imp implement Article 50 and leave the European Union. That there are some dishonest politicians who got their seats in the House of Commons uh, as a result of those promises and are currently reneging on them and trying to do anything in their power uh, to block the wishes of the people 
um, in the most devious and anti-democratic manner um, is obvious. However, what is equally obvious is there was no concession in the Queen's speech to anything other than leaving the European Union, uh, which I was very pleased to see. Well, you've made that point very strongly <laughs> and on numerous occasions. Greg, Indeed. we'll know for sure within 17 days because that is the deadline date. Um, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone for listening. We hope you found that useful. Thank you and goodbye. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. <laughs>